Hey everybody, Ray here. Today I want to talk about the crosscut sled that I bought for my DeWalt 745 job site saw. I'm going to talk about how I dialed it in to get it more accurate. I'm going to talk about a modification that I made. I'm also going to dispel a myth about this table that I think some people have perpetuated out there with their comments and reviews about this sled. And then I'm going to show you a great way to store this unit up and out of the way. So if this has some interest to you, stick around and I'll share this information. And don't forget, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up for me. If you would, I'd appreciate it. Now DeWalt actually does not recommend this crosscut sled for a job site saw, and I'm going to show you why. When you fit the miter into the miter track, it just does not have enough support to the left of the table of the job site saw. So it just wants to tip on you. That would be pretty darn unsafe. So I think that's why Rockler recommends that you don't use these in a job site saw. I was able to solve that problem by adding this side wing. And with the side wing now, when I flip that up, it fits just fine. Now I built this side wing quite some time ago. And I did it because I found when I was cutting wider material, it was just too sloppy and I wasn't very accurate. And just like this board, it kept wanting to tip off the table. So I built this a few years ago and it's worked great for me. It's really flat with my saw table. So that's why this Rockler crosscut sled slides so smoothly across it. I've got a video out there which I'll reference right up here if you want to see how I made that side wing, but I think it's absolutely essential if you want to have this crosscut sled. If you don't have a cart like I have, I will put the video down below as to how I made my rolling portable job site saw stand. It's served me well for three or four years now. Now I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about setting this up, only to say that the instructions were very clear and I had no trouble at all getting this thing set up and put together. What I do want to talk about is, first of all, how did I dial in the accuracy? And I used the five cut method, you know, where you take a square and you cut it and you cut it across five, four sides, you cut the fifth side a little bit uh, wider and then you check the width from front to back. Now what I found was when I brought this saw home and tested it the first time, you can see that one end of the strip that I cut was 0.611 and the other end was 0.592. So out of the box, it was only off 0.019 inches. My first attempt at uh, adjusting it a little bit brought it from one end being 3, 0.376 to 0.360, so I got it to 0 0.016. And then I finally got it dialed into 0.467 on one end and 0 0.70 on the other end, which is 0 0.003 or three one thousandths of an inch off across about 39 inches. Well, I can tell you that that's certainly as accurate as I'm ever going to get in the woodworking that I do. So I was able to dial this thing in really well. When you want to adjust your arm here to be more accurate, you do that by using uh, an Allen wrench in this little set screw right here. And that will determine where your arm stops when it comes back to zero. Now once you've adjusted that and gotten it where you want it, then what you can do is loosen these two screws and adjust the sighting gauge and line exactly over zero so you've got the perfect starting point. It was really easy and to get that thing dialed into three thousandths of an inch I was pretty darn happy. Now one thing that I had seen in a couple of comments was that they seemed to think that this screw was a little bit too loose. I've not found that to be the case. It seems to be plenty tight to me and I, I expect that this will maintain its accuracy. One of the modifications I made was to add a ruler to the arm of the crosscut sled here. And the way I did that was to 
make sure that my board, first of all, was flush with the metal part of the arm here. Then I measured from the edge of my sled to that metal arm. That was one and three quarter inches. So I could cut off one and three quarter inches and as long as I have this board flush with this metal arm, it's always gonna start there at one and three quarter inches. So when I put it on six inches, it's going to be six inches. Now I have tested this a number of times and it is dead on accurate. Now you might ask, well, why didn't you just put the ruler down here all the way to the edge? Well, I didn't wanna put it right here because then it would slightly raise whatever material I was working on and I didn't want that, although it probably wouldn't have been a big deal. And I didn't slide the sacrificial wood piece out to the end and start there because then I would be losing the reference point to where exactly zero was. So if I sliced a little bit off of this edge here, it would mess up my accuracy. So I. I chose just to be happy with, as long as I'm flush with the metal part of the arm here, I know that I can cut, you know, four or five inches or more and set it right up here with the stop lock and it's gonna be perfectly accurate. You know, I always do a lot of research before buying any tools and I read reviews and comments and so forth. And one of the comments that popped up a couple of times is that this stop lock is not accurate. Now I've set a ruler up here on the block on the board that if it's flush with this metal part of the cross cut it, I, it is dead on accurate I've run several tests on it it's very accurate if you slide your bar to let's let's just say seven inches I move my bar over to seven inches and I tighten it up and look what happens this appears to move to the left so let's try it on six inches. I put it on six inches and I tighten it down. It appears to move to your left. Now, if you take a square, take a combination square and put that on there, what you'll see that even though it appears as though it is moved, it certainly it did move, it is moved into a position that is 90 degrees. So it is perfectly accurate. Now to test that, I'm going to take a little short piece here, just some scrap, and I'm going to cut it right where I've set that stop block at six inches. Now we'll take our six inch piece, and I have set this ruler here to six inches exactly. And if I put this board on this ruler, line it up at the end, it is perfectly flush with the end of that ruler. I'm telling you, it is exactly six inches. So the fact that this appears to go kind of wonky on you when you tighten it down, it's actually bringing itself into a 90 degree and it looks to me like it works perfectly. Now to make sure that this fits snugly into your T-slot, the T-track itself is adjustable and it has an adjustment on the back that you use an Allen wrench that tightens up these ball bearings, these metal ball bearings on the other side. Now I have heard a couple of people say that um, even after they adjusted that, um, it, it had too much slop in it. So what they had to do was to take a couple of springs out and then double up on the springs with some of the ball bearings to solve that problem. Well, I did not find that. I found that I did have to adjust them all the way as tight as they would go, but I'm fine. I have no slop at all in there. Now, in my small shop, the next thing I have to do is figure out just where I'm going to store this thing. And I would really like it to be up on the wall. So I'm envisioning that I'll make just a little tray that I can sit it in, and then I'll just lock it in somehow on the top, and then it can sit flat against the wall and out of my way. I'm gonna play around with that a little bit, and I'll show you what I come up with. So I want my inside base of this little tray to be 25 inches long. And so what I did was I set the stop block based on my tape at 25 inches. So let's just give this a cut and see how accurate we are.
Well, as I hope you can see, we are right on the 25 there. So here's my little storage method that I think came out pretty well. I made that little tray down at the bottom here, and I just used pocket hole screws and long screws to make sure I got into the 2x4 studs. So that took care of that. And I set it in there, and I made the depth such that nothing would touch the sides. It's, it's only on the edge of the platform here. And then I just put a little toggle up here such that it can't fall out. It's going to sit in there very nicely. So it's up on the wall, it's out of the way, and I can grab it when I need it pretty quickly. This worked out great. Well, at the end of the day, that crosscut sled by Rockler gets a big thumbs up for me. I really like the accuracy. I love the way I could hang it and put it out of the way and I can get it out when I want it. That's just working out fine. I hope you found something useful in this video. If you did, hey, don't forget, hit me with that thumbs up if you would. I would appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.